Hey there, my name's Adam, your friendly Sasquatch, and today we're doing a quick video review of Olight's new Seeker 4 Pro. Really excited to do this review, and there's a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. Alright, so here is Olight's brand new for 2023 Seeker 4 Pro. Um, it's a great upgrade to the Seeker 3 Pro. Uh, it has 4,600 lumens, which is about 10% more than what the Seeker 3 Pro had. Um, there's a lot of little changes to this light as Olight just continues to iterate and improve on their designs. So um, let's go ahead and unbox this thing and take a look at what all is included. Before we get too much further into this review, I did partner with Olight on this. They sent this light to me at no charge. Very thankful for them. And uh, as a benefit to you guys, they are offering 10% off everything in their Olight store that's not currently on sale. So if you're watching this video and you like this light or another Olight product, use the coupon code GNT12 and click the link below to get your 10% off any Olight product. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so this video review is being released in parallel with the OFAN Day sales event. Um, this is a once a year sales event with some really good deals. For example, this Seeker 4 Pro that we're reviewing today normally retails for $139.99. But during the OFAN sales event, you can get it 30% off for $97.99. Now, if you're a returning customer, you can bundle it with the i3T EOS, which is a nice EDC flashlight, for only $1 more. So that's a pretty good deal. So your total spend would be $98.99. If you're a new customer and you register with Olight, you can pick up the i3e EOS in Vibrant Orange for free. That's a really good deal. I would highly recommend you take advantage of that deal during the OFAN Day event. Now, if you're watching this video and we've missed the OFAN Day sales event, that's okay. Use the coupon code GNT12 for 10% off any non-sales event at any time. So there's still an opportunity to save with my coupon code. All right, so that's the sales event deal. Let's go ahead and dive into this review. Let's go ahead and show you what all comes in the box. First and foremost, you have the light itself. It looks very similar to the Seeker 3 um, that came before it, but there are some little differences which we'll point out as we go through the review. Uh, this is the black version with kind of the blue bezel. Um, they do have some other colors available as well, but this is what I got. Second is the holster. And what's really cool about this holster is it comes with a USB-C charging port. So, um, there's some really cool features about this holster. There's a lot to cover, but for now, just know that it comes in the box and you can charge your light with the holster. So pretty cool. It also comes with the wall mounting plate. I really like this wall mounting plate. It has a 3M uh, adhesive backing on the back, or you can uh, use the two holes on either end to just screw it into the wall. The way this works is you attach this to whatever surface you want, really. It could be on the inside of your vehicle, anything like that. And then you just run the pocket clip of the holster through it until it connects and it is not coming out of there until you unlock it and pull it through. So what I'm going to be doing with this light is I'm going to be putting it into my laundry room as a charging hub. I'm going to mount this to the wall and it's just going to permanently sit there and then I can slip the light in and out as I need to when I come and go from the house or if I need to check something out in the yard, something like that late at night. So, so I really like the wall mounting option here. I think it's going to be uh, the way I deploy this light personally. You also get an extra 3M adhesive backing pad should you need it. And then you have some miscellaneous things like screws for attaching a wall mount. And then finally, a USB-C charging cable to plug into your holster. Um, it is a USB-A to USB-C charging cable, just so you know. I'm personally not going to use this one because I have a bunch of USB-C cables already, which is one of the great things about going to USB-C is most of you guys already have a USB-C cable. And I almost forgot the obligatory safety instruction and warranty information, which you don't need because you're watching this video. You'll know everything there is to know about this light. Okay, so that was everything that comes in the box. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the light itself. Starting off with the size and weight, the light is 5.2 inches long or 133 millimeters, 1.38 inches in diameter or 35 millimeters, and weighs in at 7.23 ounces or 205 grams. And uh, just in case anyone's keeping score, the differences between this light and the Seeker 3 Pro is that this light is one millimeter longer and five grams heavier. So just, ever so slightly bigger. I seriously doubt that you'll be able to notice it when you're handling a light, it's that close. For a quick size comparison, I thought it'd be interesting to compare the, the Seeker 4 Pro to the Seeker 4 Mini. Um, as you can see, there's quite a big difference between these two lights as far as like length and uh, diameter. The Seeker 4 Mini has 1,200 lumens, where the Seeker 4 Pro has 4,600 lumens, um, so quite a bit brighter light. So that's the size and weight. Let's go ahead and talk about the actual features that this light has to offer, because there's a lot of them. 
So starting at the business end here, we have a nice strike bezel here. It's anodized blue, and there are four high output LEDs giving you a total of 4,600 lumens. One of the benefits of having four LEDs instead of one is you get a very floody beam. It's not going to have a really tight hot spot. This is going to be more like a floodlight. And you'll see that when we get this outside for our testing. Moving to the head of the light, you can see it's got, you know, kind of the cooling cuts and stuff like that in there. Um, it's just a nice, you know, heavy duty aluminum constructed light. And that is a couple things. First is uh, waterproof. So it's IPX8 rated. It can be under one meter of water for at least 30 minutes. It'll probably do longer than that. Um, it's impact resistant. It's just going to wear a nice long time. The machining is top notch like it is on all Olight products and the anodizing is really high quality. I'm not seeing any unevenness, any flaking, um, no, not even scratches really. This thing is really well anodized. It's a nice hard finish. And then we have the button itself. Um, it's a bigger button and it's made of metal. So everything on this light is metal, guys. There's no plastic or cheapness to it, except for the LEDs or obviously, you know, you know whatever those things are made of. Um, but yeah, the button is all metal and it's larger and it has this rotating wheel around it, which is really nice. So when we get to the actual uh, user interface of this, we'll go over all that. But And around the button, there are lights on the right for the battery status and on the left for the power output mode that you're currently in. That's nice because you can quickly see what output mode you're on before you even turn the light on and if you need to give this light a quick charge. Moving down from the button, we have a nice rubberized grip on the uh, body of the light. And unlike the Seeker 3 Pro, where it had uh, kind of a strip of aluminum on either side, this rubberized finish wraps all the way around the light, making it super comfortable in your hand. Um, then there are kind of some finger grooves and I have sized large hands and they fit pretty good in my hand comfortably. They're not overly pronounced. So if you have a different size hand than me and for whatever reason, those locations aren't good for you, it's not gonna be much of a problem. Moving to the back, we have a large magnet and a magnetic charging area, which is great because if you have some of the MCC3 charging adapters like I do, you just snap it on and when you're done charging, you snap it off, super easy. But one of the cool things about the Seeker 4 Pro is it comes with this really nice holster with the USB-C cable. So all you have to do is slip it in and then the USB-C port on the side, put in a USB-C cable like so. And now the light is charging and when you're ready to go, you just take it and go. So like I said, I'm gonna be wall mounting this with the USB-C cable attached and it's gonna be super convenient whenever I leave the house. I know the light will be charged up and ready to go. The light takes about an hour and a half to charge when it's installed into the holster, like so. Moving to the inside of the light, we do have a nice rechargeable battery. In this case, it's the 21700 uh, cell with 5,000 milliamp hours of you know, charge in there. So that is a ton of charge to put into a flashlight. Putting it back in, it's nice that uh, the anode goes down. Um, it seems like the batteries are backward on these in the past. So, um, you know, Olight has got the battery turned around on this one compared to the Seeker 3. The same battery, but it just installs a little bit more logically in my opinion. And that's kind of the quick walk around of the light itself. Let's go ahead and put it through its paces so you can see how the light actually works. And then we'll get this thing outside so you can see it in action and what the beam looks like in its different brightness settings. Just a quick note, we are reviewing the natural white light version of this light. Um, the LEDs on this can also be a cool white, uh, depending which Seeker 4 Pro you purchase. So if you like a cooler white than this one, um, make sure you pick up the cool white version. If you like how this beam looks in the outdoor testing that we do in a little bit, then this is the natural white version that you want to grab. Before we get into the user's guide and UI portion of this video review, let's quickly talk about the brightnesses and the run times available with this light because they truly are impressive. In low mode, you have five lumens, which will run for 15 days, which, I mean, that's just a long time, guys. Um, and five lumens, it's actually pretty bright for a moonlight mode. A lot of them aren't that uh, bright, so that's probably pretty usable. In the low mode, we have 50 lumens for 60 hours of runtime. So that's over two days, almost two and a half days. And then we have a medium mode, which is 300 lumens, which is very usable, which will last for 11 hours. And then we have a high mode, which is 1,200 lumens, which will last for 135 minutes. It will then step down to 600 lumens and run for 35 minutes. And then finally 300 lumens for 10 minutes. Finally, we have the turbo mode, which is 4,600 lumens. It's just insane. We'll run for 2.5 minutes before stepping down to 1,200 lumens, which is still really bright, which will run for 122 minutes. And then it'll finally step down to 600 lumens. We'll run for another 35 minutes before depleting the battery. So these are just some insane run times and brightnesses. I'm very impressed with these numbers and you're gonna see just how bright this is when we take the light outside for the outdoor testing. So that's how bright this light is and the run times you're gonna expect when using it. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at how you actually use this thing. 
So to turn the light on, all you have to do is press the on button and the light will just come on. And to cycle through the modes, all you have to do is press and hold the power button, go to low, medium, high, low, medium, high, and just keep cycling until you get to the one you want. Now, one of the things I really like about the Seeker 4 Pro, and the Seeker 3 did this as well, is you have the scroll wheel where you can dial the brightness up or down as needed, all the way down to moonlight, all the way up to turbo mode, which I think is awesome. Um, you don't have to settle for the 1200 lumens high mode if you don't want. You could uh, you know, dial down a little bit, dial it up, whatever suits your use case scenario. So I really like that. And with the larger button, the dial feels a little bit more natural and it moves a little bit more freely than the Seeker 3 Pro did. It's just a very solid UI. Um, nothing feels loose in the button here. Everything feels very secure and functions as it should. Another thing I really like is light has memory in it. So if you're in a high mode, you turn it off, turn it back on, it'll come back in high mode. But if you set it to low mode, turn the light off, turn it back on, the light will come back in low mode. So I really like that. It has a memory function in there, which is super useful. To get to the moonlight mode, there's two ways to do it. Uh, the first is just by using the scroll wheel and just scroll all the way down and that'll be your five lumens moonlight mode. Or when the light is off, if you just press and hold, after two seconds, the moonlight mode will come on and um, it's very usable. Like I said, five lumens, even in this bright studio light environment I have, you can see it on the table just fine. I think you'll see outside that this uh, five lumens moonlight mode is very usable for putting things like keys into your doorway, um, looking under the bed, stuff like that. It's gonna be very useful. To get into turbo mode when the light is off, just double click and it will automatically come into turbo mode. It will also come into turbo mode uh, if you double click from any other setting. Double clicking will also put the light into turbo mode if you're in another setting. So here I'm in kind of the somewhere between the low and medium mode. I double click, the light automatically goes into turbo mode. Something I wanna point out about the turbo mode is there is no proximity sensor. It will just stay in turbo mode all the time, which is great for security and stuff like that. If you're trying to shine this light through windows, stuff like that, there's no annoying proximity sensor to get you tripped up. So I really like that. When you turn the light off, turn it back on, it will come back into high mode. It will not come back into turbo mode. To get the turbo mode, you always have to double click. Now there is a strobe mode on this light, so seize your warning. If you triple click, the light goes into strobe mode and it is the full 4,600 lumens brightness. Very disorienting and um, super useful. I do like strobe mode on lights. Um, I haven't really had to use it too much, but it's nice knowing it's there should you ever need it. So super simple UI, you just turn the light on, press and hold to cycle the low, medium, high. Use the scroll wheel to scroll up or scroll down as needed. When the light is off, press and hold for two seconds to get into moonlight mode. Double click for turbo and then triple click for stroke. That's all there is to it. Super simple, can't mess it up. I really like the UI on this light. Now I do wanna point out when you put the light in the holster, it can still be turned on, but the holster will automatically lock the light out. So there's two ways to unlock the light. The first way is the way the old Seeker 3 Pro worked, is you rotate the dial uh, a quarter rotation and then press the on button. So you see right now, the light does not work. If I rotate the dial and then press on, the light comes right on. The other way, here I'll unlock it and lock it again. So as you can see, the light's locked again. The other way to unlock this light is to press and hold until the light comes on. So when it's in the holster, press and hold, and then the light comes on. You'll notice it did not come on into moonlight mode, and that's because it's in the holster and you just unlocked the light. So that's one of the things about the holster is uh, it will lock the light out. It's assuming you're transporting it or it's on your body, and it doesn't want to let it into turbo mode because it could accidentally burn you. It does throw quite a bit of heat off. Um, the maximum brightness that it will allow you to turn the light on uh, while in the holster is 600 lumens. So if I double click, you'll see it doesn't get any brighter. Um, I can kind of show you this, I think, if I turn it on the turbo and then put it in the holster. So if I double click, it's super bright. And then as I put the holster on, you're gonna see the light drop in brightness going down to 600 lumens to protect you from getting burned or something like that. So that's how the light functions when it's put in the holster and how to get in and out of the lockout mode. Um, the light will automatically lock out when you put it in the holster. So as you can see, I can't turn the light on, but as soon as you pull it out of the holster, the light is gonna be unlocked. You don't need to worry about rotating the wheel or anything like that. So if I click the on button, boom, light's on. Um, so the lockout mode is only applicable when the light is securely in the holster.
So that's how you use the light, super intuitive. I'm really impressed with Olight's UI. So let's go ahead and take this thing outside so you can see what this thing looks like in action. Okay guys, we're in the testing area, AKA my backyard. So we have the Seeker 4 Pro here. We're gonna start in the moonlight mode and work our way up to the turbo mode so you can see how the beam looks and how bright this thing is. All right, so here's the moonlight mode. Um, you're not gonna be able to see much right in front of me or anything like that. It's just gonna be too dim. But if I put my hand in front of the camera, it's super obvious that my hand is there. The light is plenty bright. So. Uh, again, this is five lumens, um, not super bright. It'll work for reading a map, checking a glove box, stuff like that. This is low mode. And uh, you can kind of see the fence here, the side of the house, um, the ground right in front of me. Not gonna really be able to see too far out there. Um, but again, this is just for putting keys in the front door, things like that. So here's medium mode. Um, and this is where the floodiness of the beam really becomes apparent. I mean, everything close to me is quite bright. I can easily see the side of the house. I can see the fence, you know, no problem. But now reaching out there, I can see the, the back wall um, plenty well. It's illuminating you know, the entire wall basically, but the pots in front of the wall aren't super bright yet. Um, just needs a little bit more light. But this is medium mode, very usable. I'd be comfortable using this in a parking lot, stuff like that. This is a, uh, a good mode. And again, the runtime in medium is gonna be super long. Stepping up into high mode, this is where the power to light becomes really apparent. Um, it's really just illuminating this entire back area here. The pots are super clear. The entire back wall is well lit. I can light up the entire side of my house. This, this beam is very even, very floody. There's not a concentrated hot spot. It just provides a good floodlight across everything. Double clicking to get into turbo mode, we can see this is just next level. 4,600 lumens of power. It just it makes the side of my house just incredibly blinding almost. That entire back wall is lit really well. If I get up here, you can see the house behind it, the trees. It's got some really good throw when you put the full 4,600 lumens behind it. Um, directly in front of me is almost too bright. The ground is just like blinding white. It's just uh, incredibly powerful. Um, I think personally for me, the high mode is gonna be the most useful. The turbo mode is just blinding. It's uh, really more power than you need. Um, after three minutes, this does start stepping down. Um, I think the high mode is going to be the most useful mode with this light. Turbo mode is really more than you need unless you're doing search and rescue out in the woods or something. So um, yeah, that's the different modes. Let's go ahead and just uh, triple click for strobe. And you can see just like every other Olight, the strobe is very disorienting and would be very challenging. Um, we'll just take it off that because it gets the be a headache after a while. So yeah, those are all the settings. Let's go ahead and just cycle through them all real quick so you can see how they compare to each other in quick succession. So here's the moonlight mode, then switching to low, medium, high, low, medium, high, then double click for turbo. And remember with the scroll wheel, you can quickly dim it down, you can quickly brighten it up. Super nice UI. You can have any brightness level in between the, everything from the turbo all the way down to moonlight. So keep that in mind. These are just the presets. You do have that scroll wheel giving you a lot of flexibility. Okay, so there you have it. That's the quick and dirty review of the Olight Seeker 4 Pro. I think it's an excellent upgrade from the Seeker 3 Pro. Not only is it about 10% brighter, but some of the UI features are just a little bit more intuitive, and they fixed a few of the kind of nagging issues that the Seeker 3 Pro had. Not that it was a bad light, but there was room for improvement, and this light steps up to the plate and delivers. I'm really impressed with it. If you like this light, don't forget that between September 19th and September 23rd, Olight is running a annual sale. If you use the code GNT12 at the link below, you'll get 10% off a purchase of one of these lights. So as we head into fall here, it's a really good time to pick up a new EDC light, pick up an emergency light for your bag, for in the car, or just some extra lights for around the house for when the power goes out. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video review helpful. If you did, hit that like button below. It helps the channel out a lot. And don't forget to hit the subscribe and bell icon so you're the first to be notified when I release new videos just like this one. Cheers.